morning to all. It's such a privilege to worship with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I felt that I have had enough for the day to take me through the week already. But I believe that I am given this opportunity to speak in something more that God wants to share with his people. This morning's passage is going to be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 12. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry of, as we have received mercy, we fear not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. Today I want to briefly share from the latter part of this passage. Recently in our Bible study, we would have discussed uh, Genesis chapter 1, and we spent a fair amount of time talking about when God created light. And for some reason, I have been reflecting on light. In verse 6, we just read, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We would have even sang this morning some songs that even realize that we're mentioning about the light in darkness. And we know that how light dispels darkness. And in 1 Peter 2 9, it says, But we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that we should show forth the praises of Him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So wherever you go, wherever you turn, you cannot get away from this light. And God himself is light, and he's calling us out of darkness into his marvelous light, not our light. So it is nothing to do with us. Everything is to do with him. All we have to do is to make that right step forward. God chooses us as representatives of himself. And the same way he has called us out of darkness into light, we are also expected to do the same. Ephesians 5 eight, For we were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Death brings darkness, but Christ brings the light. He is the light, and there is no darkness in him. 
His light brings life, everlasting life. But we must choose it, or rather, choose Him. I was also taking, I was also looking at the passage from another version, which I'd like to read. You can't get, you can't get tired of the word. I'll read it from another version. This is the Amplified Version, which says, "Therefore." Since we have this ministry, just as we received mercy from God, granting us salvation, opportunities, and blessings, we do not get discouraged nor lose our motivation. Because you know sometimes we can get really distracted and, and we lose our motivation and our drive. But we have renounced the disgraceful things hidden because of shame not walking in trickery or adulterating the word of God, but stating the truth openly and plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is in some sense hidden behind a veil, it is hidden only to see those who are perishing. Among them, the God of this world, Satan has blinded the minds of the unbelieving to prevent them from seeing the illuminating God, the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves merely as your bond servants for Jesus' sake. So even when we come and we give testimonies, it may be sharing our stories, but in our testimonies, you can always see Jesus in there. We are preaching the light. And whatever little things we come up here and say, we are representing the light. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as the Lord, and ourselves merely as bond servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory and majesty of God clearly revealed in the face of Christ. But we have this precious treasure, the good news about salvation in unworthy earthen vessels of human frailty, so that the grandeur and surpassing greatness of the power will be shown to be from God. His sufficiency is not from ourselves. We are pressured in every way, hedged in, but not crushed, perplexed, unsure of finding a way out, but not driven to despair, hunted down and persecuted, but not deserted to stand alone, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying around in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the resurrection life of Jesus also may be shown in our body. For we who live are constantly experiencing the threat of being handed over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the resurrection life of Jesus may be evidence in our mortal body, which is subject to death. So physical death is actively at work in us, but spiritual life is actively at work in you. The NIV refers to the earthen vessels as jars of clay. The message Bible calls us clear parts. The new living translation goes a little bit deeper with fragile clear jars. The Greek word means bit clear and it refers to clear parts. I'm sure we all know the scripture in Isaiah 64, 8, where it says, But no one, Lord, thou art our Father, we are the clay, and thou art the potter. And we are all the work of thy hand. Now, when we hear about clay, I always remember as a child going down to Chalky Mount. Because my uncle's um, father in law, he used to have this pottery going on. And it was always such intense um, attention into what he was doing in whatever piece of vessel he was making. But when I see that we are compared to clay, it sounds so 
it sounds like a bit brittle or, or it doesn't sound like something that has much, much strength in it. But yet, we as clear parts are carrying such a magnificent power within us when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord. And then when they hear the scripture goes on to say we are troubled on every side. You can imagine a clear part being troubled on every, on every side. It sounds like we are under so much pressure sometimes that it is, it is to break us. Yet, yet not, we are not broken, we are not distressed as the word of God says. We are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed. This body that we have, when we give our hearts to God, you know, years ago you would hear people say, I'm going to give, every, every, I'm going to give your heart to God every time and find my daddy. Even sometimes the songs that you sing, uh, there's one that we say, I'm sad, uh, so we say, uh, in right, out right, upright, downright, happy all the time. I wish I was happy all the time. I would love to be happy all the time, but sometimes, you know, life situations carry you and they squeeze you and they force you into some. Have you already right, done right sad sometimes, but praise God that He does not leave us alone. This body, as the scripture says, is this life which we live are always delivering unto death, but it is for Jesus' sin. And we know that he was crucified, he died, he was buried, but praise God, he was resurrected. So even when we go through things that we seem to want to take us to the grave, sometimes, you know, things come from the left, from the right, you're at home, your family's not working like how you were like them, you're at school, you're at church, no matter where you find that you are being squeezed, I'm not saying squeezed because if you're coming from the left, you're coming from the right, it's like nowhere to turn. In verse 7, Paul busts in with an interesting point. He was just talking about the light to shine out of darkness and shining our hearts to give the light of God's knowledge. But he's coming now saying, um, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this treasure. A treasure is something that is of value. It is worthwhile keeping. So when you have treasure, you, t you tend to want to hide it. But everywhere in clear parts to me is right there in the open. We as clear parts are always there in the open. The meaning of clear in Hebrews is mud or mire. And if we are made from mud or mire, and we are constantly under so much pressure, meaning that we get chipped, sometimes we are broken, so our God has to do some work with us. The thing about clear parts is, even if we get broken and we have to be put back in from the start to go through the same process again, God can do it. No matter how many times we get knocked down, we get lit up. There's so many ways that uh, I can look at how we feel so defeated, but God puts us back to where He wants us to be. If He has to get us beaten to a pulp, back to the very clear that that the clear parts are made of, He can make all things possible to put us back together again. I'm sure you all heard about Humpty Dumpty. And this is another example of Humpty Dumpty. God putting us back together again. So whether we may look at clay as being mud or mire or whatever, we were made by God. Psalms 103, Psalms David, he says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. So whatever condition these earthen vessels are in, know that God himself created them, or better yet, these containers, 
These containers that are created to withstand, to withstand all types of trials, hardships, tribulations, and yet he chooses to put his treasure within us. These vessels are carrying his light. So whatever or uh, wherever we go, we are supposed to shine his light. Second Corinthians 12, 7 to 10 says, because of the surpassing greatness and extraordinary nature of the revelation which I received from God, for this reason, to keep me from thinking of myself as important, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to torment and harass me, to keep me from exalting myself, Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might leave me. But he has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough. Always available regardless of the situation. For my power is being perfected and completed and shows itself most effectively in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly boast in my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may completely inform me and may dwell in me. So I am well pleased with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, and with difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak in human strength, then I am strong. Truly able, truly powerful, truly drawing from God's strength. And this brings me back to a testimony that was shared last week. I remember the sister speaking of how when life trials come her way, she used to turn to drugs. And she would get her highs. And then feeling all well and dandy, but from the time the, the, the highs are gone, and the situation she's faced with again, she needs another height. But thank God, when we are in Christ, we don't need that type of height. As long as we get that light within us, and knowing that he would never leave us or forsake us, he is taking us through every valley, every deep, every deep down moment that we are experiencing, God is there with us. I don't know how many of us have reached that stage where we can, like Paul, see how pleased we are in such circumstances. Because in that scripture, it just read, Paul is saying that he's pleased with these weaknesses and with these insults and distresses. Our opening passage of scripture says we have treasure and we have already established the weakness and frailty of these vessels. Some may look polished smoothed, some might be chipped, cracked, or broken, but however these vessels are, they are being used to, to host God's treasure. God has taken up residence in many of these vessels. He hasn't forced his way into them either. He is dreaded by invitation. As long as you have accepted Christ in your heart, he is living in you. Whether you were a thief, a liar, a prostitute, an adulterer, a gossiper, whatever, a drug dealer, whatever you were, and you have accepted God in your heart, you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. And you now have the power to spread God's word and reach others. No matter how long you were in the kingdom, no matter how short you can now give your heart to God today, this good news is worth sharing. It is a light that cannot be contained. Whenever you are in a dark room and you turn on the light, you can see how darkness flees. So we have, we now have the power to do his work. Whether it's talking to somebody at the bus stop, a colleague at work, a patient at the doctor, a man or a woman on the block, a parent at home, 
assembly, whoever we have that power, we have to use it. God has given it for a purpose. Acts 1, chapter 8 says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Mm. I will even take these vessels further. We as an assembly are a body which I will call a vessel. So therefore I see us as an earthen vessel as well. Whether we are broken or whole, we are a vessel. When we come together, our mission still remains the same. If you open these doors, do it with love in your heart. Someone may be passing and you have the opportunity to minister to them, even if it is a high and a how are you. If you are assured, even taking someone to their seats is a ministry. Yeah. If you have a testimony, share it. Yeah. Whatever you do, make sure that God's power is manifested in every action. We may be troubled on every side, whether it is fear, anxiety, confusion, but we are not hopeless, perplexed. You might be confused in our circumstances. I don't know what you are going through today, but know that you are not alone, and you are not the only person that is going through a situation. We all have situations. As long as we have life on this earth, we will have situations. And especially when you are serving God, you will see these situations coming left, right, and center because the enemy of this world is intentional about what he does. He is trying to seek to get us from, he wants us away from having eternal life. He doesn't want us to have eternal life. But if we are in God, we will have eternal life. Don't get distracted by the many trials that might come your way. I might be here preaching to you this morning, but I have many, and they come like, I remember sister preaching testifying last week. Life is hard. It is not easy. So I will not fool you and tell you that. Trials come, and they come, and they come. But you know what? God keeps me going, and going, Amen. and going. Amen. Christ has won victory over death. Whatever we go through gives us or makes opportunities for Christ to demonstrate his power or his strength through all our weaknesses. The songwriter says, I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. Are you one of his own? I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. Amen. If I but ask him, he will deliver. In my griefs with me, he will blend. Whatever I'm going through, he will blend with me, so he can carry me through. When I'm when going through my troubles, I will come here looking like I'm beat up and beat down. Because he will put his light within me that his glory must be seen. Remember, okay. it is all about him. Amen. Tempted and tried, I need a great savior. One who can help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, he all my cares and sorrows will share. Oh, how the world to evil alerts me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus, he will enable over the world the victory to win. This morning I'm telling you, tell Jesus all of your troubles. I'm not saying that you can't have a friend that you can share sometimes what you're going through with, but tell Jesus first. Let him be first and foremost in your lives. Let him be the light that he is. Don't just read about him as a light, but know that he is the light and he dispels every trace of darkness. We might feel that sometimes we slipping up, we falling, oh shoot. I can't believe I'm doing this again, but God is a merciful God. 
So I encourage you to let the light of Jesus shine and to know God and to make him known. Thank you.